Okay, so it says a uh, narrow beam of uh, white light uh, enters a prism made of crown glass at 45 degree instant angle. Um, since it's an angle in the figure, it's probably not randomized. But let me label this theta naught. Uh, some instant angle as shown below. At what angles from the perpendicular to the exiting surface? So I, let me draw those so that I have some reference. So this is the perpendicular to the exiting surface. And this is also perpendicular to the exiting surface. Let me label this uh, theta r and label this theta violet. At what angles these do the red and violet components of the light emerge from the prism? Oh, I think there's a number you will have to look up. I'm pretty sure it gets mentioned in the hint, which is that you have to know the index of refraction of crown glass. That's why I tell you exactly what kind of glass it is. Uh, index of refraction of uh, crown glass for the red color. Um, it's a number you have to look up in the book and uh, know there should be a table. And you also have to know index of refraction of the same material, but for different wavelength for violet. It's going to be a very slightly different number. Uh, like one is 1.4 uh, something, or like 1.44, the other is 1.43. So there should be a very small difference. That's going to lead to the difference in the outgoing angle. That's how prisms work. Um, so. So yeah, they are asking what angles perpendicular to, all right. Um, so it looks like what most of the work here is going to be is working out the geometry for this uh, setup. Uh, let me see if I can blow up the figure so that um, I can, well, so that I can draw more easily. Close enough, all right. <laughs> <laughs> With the geometry, a lot of work is done in drawing the figures. So, um, so I want to have a, a setup where I can uh, draw clear figures that won't be confused between, uh, because I can see in the arrangement here, I'm going to have a lot of overlapping things. So this uh, uh, instant light, at the first surface, they are already going to separate a little bit. Let me call the angle. Uh, the refracting angle for the red color, theta one, and the refracting angle for the violet color, theta two. And what my job here should be to relate these angles um, to the angle of incidence at this second refracting surface. So, um, so this is the angle of incidence, uh, theta O R, and this is the other angle of incidence, uh, theta O V. And oh, uh, I think uh, in just extending these perpendicular lines, I already see the triangle that might be useful to me. So this is already completing a triangle. So let me see if I can figure out the relationship between the angles. Um, so when in doubt, extend to draw auxiliary figures. Hope something will give you an inspiration. Um, and at the same time, don't be distracted by something that looks like it's to scale, but it's not really. Um, so let's see here. I think I have some piece of information here. So this, uh, is, um, yeah, so this is a 60 degrees. This by construction is 90 degrees, which means this should be 30 degrees. Um, and this is also 90 degrees. Okay, so I'm looking at this triangle right now. And there's a theorem about triangles and the internal angles and the external angle that says that the, this external angle here is the sum of these two angles. Or I guess you can also do it the other way. You can figure out that this is 60 degrees. However, whatever route you take, 
you should eventually figure out that this angle here is 120 degrees. And you can do the exact same thing, I think. You can do the exact same thing for, um, so you can imagine doing the exact same thing for the triangle involving the red light. Um, so the angle here, just as with the violet, um, because it's, you know, again, perpendicular and it only involves the geometries of the prism. This is going to be 120 degrees as well, I think. Yes. <laughs> so if you keep extending this, then this is the 30 degrees and uh, yeah. So, so, so this is, both of these are triangles where you know one, two angles, and uh, you have to not think about the third angle. And you know, some of those angles are 180 degrees. So, um, so that's enough information for you to start writing down equations relating all these angles with the goal being that you are going to solve for the angles theta V and theta R in the end. So let me just start. Um, I think I figured out all the geometry I need to. So let me just uh, write down all the equations that I'm going to need. And this is going to be a common refrain that you will see in, in really any physics class is that you want to break your problem solving into two steps. In the very first step, what I'm trying to do is figure out the physics, figure out all the pieces of the information that I'm gonna need to solve it. And in the second step is where I work out all the math. And in the first step, uh, what it will all boil down to is writing down a system of equations where the number of equations match the number of unknowns. So in the process of uh, fig drawing figures here, I have already written uh, quite a few unknowns. Uh, I already have one, two, uh, three, four, five, six unknowns. <laughs> so I'm going to be writing down something like a six equations. And a lot of these you will be able to solve step by step. So it's not gonna actually be all that complicated, but I want to, Make sure that that's the mindset you are in. Uh, you are not trying to, in one step, figure out the formula for the final answer. That's uh, usually a very unproductive way to approach a physics question. It's to go step by step. So, uh, so starting from here, uh, so there's a refraction. So I can use the Snell's law. Using Snell's law, I can write down two equations, one for red color, one for violet. So, um, and air or uh, I guess uh, I'll make things simpler and not write down in there. That's just one times sine of the angle, incident angle is gonna be for red color, uh, the index of refraction of glass for red color times sine of um, what I labeled as theta one. And the second equation for the violet color, one times the sine of theta naught is equal to index, index of refraction for the glass for the violet color times sine of theta two. And so far I have two equations and two unknowns. And so what it is, is I can actually solve for this numerically right now, if I want you to, but I'm not gonna get distracted. Let me just keep on going. Um, using the theta one and theta two individually, I can write down an expression for angle of incidence on the second surface. And this is a geometry question and that's the geometry that I worked on. So let me write down the equation that expresses that geometry, uh, this triangle first. Uh, theta one plus 120 degrees plus the angle of incidence for the red color, theta naught r, is gonna add up to 180 degrees. And the same equation for the second part, theta two plus 120 degrees plus theta naught uh, violet is equal to 180 degrees. And um, so it, we do these next two equations, we introduce the two more unknowns, uh, the, the angle of instance for red and angle of instance for violet, uh, but I guess once you solve for theta one and two here, then you can plug it in here, solve for these two angles. Um, so two more equations, two more unknowns, you can solve all these so far. 
And the very final step is figuring out the refraction at the end. And here, just be careful in the order that you write. Um, the index of refraction of glass for red color times the sine of the angle of incidence for red color is going to be equal to the, what I label this theta r. Oops, <laughs> sorry, um, jumping ahead for myself here. One, index of refraction for air times the sine of theta r. And the same thing for violet, index of refraction of glass for violet times sine of theta naught for violet. That's the angle that we worked out above or could work out one times the sine of theta violet. So in this final set of two last equations, I have two unknowns and two additional unknowns and two additional equations, so I can solve for that. So, um, so in this particular question, it kind of works out neatly in that you can kind of work your way from top to bottom. And even though it's a technically system of six equations, it's a six uh, easy equations that you can work through um, fairly simply. Um, there will be some situations in the future where all these variables kind of mix with each other. Um, those are more complicated, harder questions. And especially for those questions, it's uh, important that you separate out uh, the step where you are writing down all your pieces of information, your system of equations with the rest of the algebra, which uh, is easy enough here. Everyone, I think, can just do it, which is why I'm not doing it. <laughs>